as I've explained many times, whenever you have anything influenced by Gnosticism, mystical Christianity, which Roman Catholicism is, you will have the problem of people using the same terms we do, or even biblical terms, but meaning something different by them. The most common example I use is the term grace. In Greek, grace is charism. It means gift. In Hebrew, grace is chesed, covenant mercy. In English, grace is undeserved favor. But in Roman Catholicism, it's an ethereal substance earned by the sacraments. Latin gracia, but they give it a different definition. They use the word, we're saved by grace. Yes, but to us, that means something undeserved. It's a gift. It's unmerited. To a Catholic, it's something earned by a sacramental ritual or works. They use the same term, but mean something different by it. Well, the term Eucharist presents a similar problem in dealing with the deceptions of Roman Catholicism. The word Eucharist comes from the Greek word Eucharistia, which attempts to translate the Hebrew bracha. The, the root meaning of bracha, or baruch, is blessed, but blessed with the idea of a ritual thanksgiving or a liturgical thanksgiving, a blessing that is a liturgical thanksgiving. That is the etymological root meaning of the word, tracing the Greek back to the way the Greek translates a Hebrew concept. Um, the Lord's Supper is not really presented that way in Scripture. It's presented as a remembrance based on the Paschal Seder. Do this in remembrance of me. A zikaron, a zikaron a remembering of what the Lord did and a testimony to what he's going to do. That is, it's a foretaste, as it were, an appetizer of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Like Passover, the Jews look back to the redemption out of Egypt with Moses, but they look forward to the coming of the Messiah and the future redemption. So we look back to the cross and resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus, but look forward to his return. It's a looking back and a looking forward. Hence, the problem is not so much with the word Eucharist, but the way the Roman Catholic Church misapplies it and even misdefines it, much the same as they do with the word grace. This is the issue. Catholicism will use terms, even biblical terms, but assign a completely different meaning to them. Unless you know the presuppositions of Roman Catholicism, you'll think that they're speaking the same language you are, and meaning the same things by the same terms and words. But that is not necessarily the case. More than that, most Roman Catholic people themselves are ignorant of these things. They don't even know it. They just parrot it out because it's what they've always been taught. This is the problem. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, 
setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be shadows of the beast, shadows of the beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, the Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.